Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to 101 Marketing Tips in Under 50 Minutes. I'd like to introduce to you today Brian Epperson, CEO of Target River and creator of the Great American Buy Local. Um, he's going to give us some fabulous tips today, and I am going to just go over a few things. One is please keep your microphone on mute until the end when we have questions. And also, if you can put your view into speaker view, that way Brian um, will have the screen. So with that, I want to welcome uh, Brian Epperson with Target River. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Kathy. And uh, thank you for joining in, everyone. This is obviously going to be a fast-paced one with 101 tips to share. And I've already been told by one of our fellow chamber members that they're going to keep track and see if I get through all of them, all of them so they make sure they get their money's worth. Uh, so with no further ado, we're going to go ahead and uh, dive right in. So let me uh, share my screen here and we'll get going. All right, so tip number one. By the way, uh, anybody that would like a copy of this deck at conclusion, um, just be sure to put your email in the uh, chat and we can uh, send you a copy of this, okay? So here we go. Let's see here, what? There we go, covering a lot. First tip, the majority of search that people do nowadays is done with their voice. So what that means is when people are searching for something, their favorite restaurant, an attorney that they might want to use, a plumber that they might need, a place to go purchase clothes or buy some other item, they're going to use more words because people, it's easier to say a search than it is to type one out. So that's very important when you think about your website to make sure that you've got lots of content on there for the search engines to match with the longer words that people are using when they search. Tip number two, improve a key relationship. When you're out there prospecting, and obviously it's a little different right now under the COVID times, so we're having to do things such as this virtually, make sure that you're engaging potential clients and prospects on a, a visit that's non-pitchy, where you're not doing demonstrations or sales, but you're learning about them and asking key questions that will help them help you learn about their needs, their competitors, and strategies that might differentiate them from their competition. Number three, Google search. Everybody always wanted to be what was called position one when it came to a search result. Nowadays, we work with our clients to help them achieve what we call position zero. And what that is, as you can see on the screenshot here, this was a search for the term how to wax a car. And if you notice, nothing listed on this search is an actual website. Those are all down below these items that appeared here. So these are things such as videos, images, answers to questions that Google will place above anybody's website listing. So there's power in working through things like video and images and such to get to what we call the holy grail of a search result, and that is position zero. If you haven't already, make sure if you have a business and you have a website, install Google Analytics. It is so powerful to give you lots of great data about who is visiting your website from the demographic information such as age and gender ranges to the interests that they have. So while you may have a pet store, there might be other things that many of your visitors have in common as well, which can allow you to figure out how to market to more types of people in the future. It also will show you um, where people are coming from when they get to your website. So you can have an understanding of what things are working well for you with your online marketing and what things aren't working well for you. Facebook and Instagram, and this actually holds true for LinkedIn as well if you're marketing to business people, is you can create automatic form fill lead generations. So what that does is, for instance, in order to have a Facebook account, you have to have an email address. So if you create a lead opportunity for someone to learn about your business, um, the person doesn't have to fill out their name, doesn't have to fill out their email address, and then you can ask them a lead um, or a question, an open-ended question that gives you a little bit more information about them. But it's a quick, easy way for somebody to respond that they are interested in your service or business uh, that you have. A great way to get more traffic and engagement on Facebook 
which a lot of people don't know to do, is if you have an email database of people that have subscribed to a newsletter of yours or prospects of yours, you can find those people on Facebook by uploading that email database into Facebook. Facebook will then let you know how many of those email accounts exist on Facebook. And then you can run a specific small campaign to just those people, inviting them to engage your business or to simply like your Facebook page. So in the future, when you post on there, more people will see what you are posting about. Number seven, Google. A lot of times when people are running ads on Google search engines, they forget about the mobile side of it. So the majority of search is done with a mobile device. And so, so often when we're on a mobile phone, we see people that are running search ads that send people to a website. If I'm on a mobile phone, oftentimes I wanna to try to talk to somebody. So make sure that your Google mobile ads have the ability for somebody to click and dial your business direct, directly, which could expedite your opportunity to do business with that, with that potential lead. A great little trick if you want to try to find people in their home is to do a reverse append. So for example, we have a shoe client that has um, email addresses but no physical addresses for a lot of people. So we were able to do an append and find the physical mailing address for many of the customers that they had an email address on. And conversely, we were able to also find the email addresses of people that they had a physical address on. So it allowed them to grow their email database substantially. They had literally tens of thousands of customers that they had shipped product to because they had bought them through other third-party sites such as Nordstrom.com and other places, but they didn't know the email address. So we did that append and created a substantial email database that they could do market on their own. Call to actions. It's very important, especially in a digital space, to make sure that when you have somebody visiting your Facebook page, your Instagram profile, your website, that you ask people to do something. Give them a reason to want to engage you. Ask them to learn more, discover, sign up, get something. Make the ask by putting that in a simple, clear, concise button or call to action so that you can increase the number of leads that you're getting. Number 10, a very expensive or often perceived expensive way to market to people is with traditional radio. And in this market, maybe that's channel 933 or Rock 105 or others. And it often can be prohibitive because you don't want to reach everybody in San Diego County. You maybe only want to reach people in Carlsbad or along the 78 corridor. An alternative to that is to use radio or online streaming. Think Pandora, Spotify, or iHeart, where you can go in and say, I only want to reach people in these specific zip codes with these characteristics that maybe have these certain interests. So it allows you to use the power of a radio message, which can uh, really infiltrate and penetrate folks' minds and thoughts, um, but in a very targeted fashion, in a very cost-efficient way. Television has a similar approach now, targeted television. Uh, again, if we're a business and let's say you're in Carlsbad and you only want to reach people within Carlsbad, it wouldn't make sense to give a great video that you created to Channel 10 or KUSI to air if all you care about are residents of Carlsbad. But with targeted television, you can reach people that are utilizing things such as Hulu or Apple TV or Chromecast or Fire Stick or um, other digital ways that they're watching television to reach people by zip code and again, by interest that they have, things that they're looking for. We have a client um, that, is, that sells large scale farm equipment, several hundred thousand dollars. Ever, obviously, not everybody is in the market for a several hundred thousand dollar piece of farm equipment. Very narrow audience. We use targeted television to reach just specific farmers in different pockets around the country based on zip code by zip code and their interests. So it's a very cost efficient way if you've taken the time to build a video for people to actually see that video. 
remnant. So this is an idea if you do have a larger audience and let's say you want to reach a larger part of San Diego County where you can negotiate with the television stations to basically buy leftover excess inventory, which they always have. There are exceptions during key political times and such, um, but in general, there's that remnant inventory, which often they end up having to give as bonus or free spots to their existing paid clientele. Um, so if you do have a large part of the county you wanna reach, that's a great low, uh, low cost way to get on traditional television. LinkedIn ads, uh, very powerful. If your business is trying to reach other business professionals, LinkedIn is a place to be. 25% of Americans have a LinkedIn business prof a LinkedIn profile, and obviously that's the majority of working people. And you can do some amazing targeting of people by their job title, by the company size that they work for, by the specific company that they work for even, um, the industries that they're in, uh, and you can do all sorts of uh, not only great targeting, but lead acquisition as well as we talked about earlier. Recent search engine optimization advice from Google. Great little acronym, everybody loves them. This is EAT, expertise, authoritative, and trust. Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, Yahoo, all the search engines want to create a great user experience for people. So when someone does a search, these search engines are going to decide which website gets listed first and second and so forth based on how well they think that website is going to answer the question that the searcher is looking for. So if your site has more content, if your site is deemed authoritative because it is referenced on other websites, and if it's trusted, for instance, do you have an SSL certification for your website, meaning when you look at your website's address, does it say HTTP or does it say HTTPS? If you do not have the S at the end of that, you are going to be penalized by the search engines. They want to send people to sites that are going to answer their questions and protect their experience while they're on there. Online brand protection. A lot of businesses have a trademark, but they haven't taken the next step to protect that trademark online. So what happens is other competitors can run ads and steal your traffic. It also means you are spending a lot more than you should, and you're also getting a lot less clicks to your website as well. So we've had clients that have done a brand enforcement with the search platforms and reduced their cost by 90% and increase their traffic by over 70% to their website. So if you haven't enforced your trademark online, do that process with the two big players, Google and Bing. Here's three in one, video tip with YouTube. Three great things with YouTube. The dashboard on YouTube will tell you when people stop watching your video. And so you can go back in and test or to see where you might need to make changes and edit a video that you've created. And you see that, wow, not even 50% of the people make it through the first 25% of my video. What's wrong at the opening that I need to change? Um, it also allows you to test things before you go spend money on other platforms like targeted television. And then after the 29th second on YouTube, it's basically considered a free impression as well if you're running a paid campaign on YouTube. So three great values of the YouTube platform if you have video that you've created. A great way if you have a storefront and you want in-store traffic, if you're a restaurant or a retailer, is to run click to route ads on Facebook, Waze or Google's platform, such as with Google Maps. So when people are presented that ad and they click it, it's automatically going to give them the route to your location or if you have multiple locations, the location that is closest to them at that time. Uh, great, very low cost of engagement way to drive more foot traffic to your business. Billboards. Yes, they still can be powerful and effective, but the key is the location with who you're targeting, the size of it, the quality of it, and the frequency that you change it. One, bill, one company that does a great job is 
um, Barona Casino. So they own, so they lease on a monthly basis several billboards along the Interstate 8 corridor. And they have three of them in a row, literally right after each other. And every month they change out that messaging in order to keep it fresh and relevant and top of mind with the 300,000 or so uh, vehicles that drive by every week on that pass. Retargeting. Most of us have experienced this when we've been online and are shopping for something and we didn't buy it, but then we start to see ads over the coming days and weeks reminding us of that trip we didn't book or those shoes we didn't buy. That's retargeting or remarketing. You can do that to people in from a variety of ways. People that have visited your website, people that have watched a video that you have online, somebody that's been to one of your, to your business's social accounts and so forth. Um, so if you haven't set up retargeting for your business, be sure to do so. It's very low cost to do and it helps you engage people that have at least started to learn about your company or your service. Here's a huge one. Secure your business, your Google My Business listing. 56% of businesses do not have it secured. Why is this important? Because it's one of the first things that people see when they do a search on Google is that business's listing. If you haven't secured it, Google's going to put some basic information of what they think about your business or what they're aware about your business, but it's not going to be all accurate and it's not going to be detailed. So secure it and complete all of the fields. That includes pictures, videos, description, et cetera. You wanna make sure that you own it because here's the other important reason. About 25% of the clicks that occur now, nowadays on the Google search platform are on people's Google My Business listings. So if you don't have yours secured, do it today and complete it. Think about colors. So change in here, talking about what colors you use for your company. So for instance, what does the color blue say? It presents control, it presents reliability. So here was an old cellular company, Singular, who was trying to compete with some of the others and one of the things that they were a knock against them was their consistency and service. So they wanted to convey that in, not only in their name, but also in the color that they utilize. So when you're thinking about your brand, your name, and or colors that you use on your website with buttons or other things, think about what each color says about you and what you're doing. Split test, we do this constantly. And what this simply means, if we're going to um, put an offer out there, we might test how well that offer gets pre uh, received by people by using by putting two different versions of it out there, one with one photo and the other version where the only difference is a different type of photo. So the offer is still the same. Maybe it's a 15% off discount or a free shipping offer or a free consultation that you're willing to do, but test and see which photo or which color button or which call to action gets you better response. And then once you find out which one does, Challenge that champion. So you always want to see if you can continually improve. We work with some Hilton properties and we continually challenge this one photo every single month. And this photo is the champion photo for five years running. Um, but we never want to rest on our, loyals, our laurels and see if we can improve a message that we're putting out there. Next, a great way to do testing and to build landing pages and is a very do easy do-it-yourself one is a program called Unbounce. So if you need to build a simple landing page for your business and you want to test different things with it, I would encourage you to check out the program called Unbounce. Optimizely is a version to allow you to split test. So if you have an online store, um, this allows you to split test a lot of things with your e-commerce sites. So this is a great tool for those of you that are in the online uh, shopping space. Conversion rate optimization, but, uh, fancy term for testing those ideas that we were talking about. Which photos are going to improve your uh, lead generation? Which, lead, uh, which headlines, which, um, which CBMs, which are confidence building measures? Maybe it's awards and accolades that you have received as a business. Test to see which ones of those are going to increase engagement on any of your 
business communications, including your business cards. If you want to, if you have a website, I encourage you to go to gtmetrics.com. Okay, plug in your website's address and it will give you an assessment about the performance of your site, checking for speed, security, and several other things about your website. So another quick, great, easy tool, again, GT Metrics, will give you an assessment of how your site is performing um, so that you know if there's any corrections that need to be made by whoever developed your website. Better audience targeting. Sometimes we think strictly about digital, but there are tremendous ways to still reach people with more traditional tactics beyond the digital, such as direct mail and email, where we can target people and even outdoor based on the audiences that we're trying to reach. So always make sure you're thinking beyond just some of the things that we commonly consider so you can target the exact right audience for your business. If you're targeting smaller groups, such as 25 people or less, Think of unique things or ways that are going to make you stand out. Maybe it's a personalized cartoon that you have designed for them as a caricature, handwritten letters. How many of us don't receive them anymore, right? Um, and so when we do, it really stands out. Oftentimes, the person between us and who we want to do business with is that uh, receptionist, executive assistant, that gatekeeper. How can we engage them to get them to a, maybe let our next phone call get through to who we're trying to reach. Air cover. So here's a unique thing that's very low cost. There is, we, we see them all the time. So when we go to websites, we're exposed to lots of ads. Those are called display ads or banner ads. They're a very extremely low cost way to reach a large amount of people in a very focused area. So what you can often do is put a, banner ad campaign out there uh, that advises people of who you are so then when you do start marketing to them via email or phone calls and that there's an awareness already of who you are and what your business does a very hyper targeted example of this and most of you will recognize this as the del mar fairgrounds or sorry i grew up here so the san diego county fairgrounds um, one of our clients is in this map and they are a resort and so we do very hyper-targeted display campaigns during times that there are large events at the fairgrounds. So it allows us to leverage a great location during peak times when we can reach a lot of folks that are in our target audience to promote a property that is literally down the road from the fairgrounds. How many of us do email marketing, right? Or even our own one-to-one -one emails that we send out. Um, one of the first things that's gonna make or break your email is the subject line, okay? Uh, if it's a bad subject line, people aren't gonna open it. So probably the biggest thing I would recommend here is to keep your subject lines very short and sweet, under 30 characters. If you write a long subject line and the best part of it or the most enticing part is 40, 50 characters or letters down there, they're not even gonna see it on their mobile phone, which is what device most emails are open on nowadays, and they won't open your email. When to email. Here's, there's lots of factors when it comes to the seasonality and the frequency and that, but a uh, little quick tip here. Two top days to send out emails if you're trying to prospect. Tuesdays or Thursdays at either 10 a.m. or 2 p.m., okay? Tuesdays or Thursdays, 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. if you're doing an email newsletter out to people that you have in a subscriber base. A great thing if you're selling products is to leverage what are called shopping ads. They're available on Google, Bing, Facebook, obviously other places like Etsy, what they do is you connect your inventory of product to these platforms so when someone does a search, they can be presented with live examples of, of product that you have available for sale with a great image shot, a description, a rating, and a price, and an offer. Um, so those are very powerful ads that have a, a high percentage of people clicking on them and going, then going and shopping on a site if you have an online site. Dynamic ads. So if you notice here, this example is of a search where someone was looking for car insurance. But notice we have North Carolina as the example. 
So we've got a smart ad and what I'd call a dumb ad here. So the smart ad is the one that used a dynamic ad where they actually, the ad actually put in NC in the title and North Carolina insurance. So if I'm an looking for car insurance in North Carolina, I might be more inclined to go with the company that seems local versus State Farm who has a generic ad that they're running nationwide. Um, oftentimes when we're doing things, we want to do, do them with somebody that's close to us that we can actually meet and talk to potentially. And this insurance dot, this insure.com, they're actually not local in North Carolina. They just made their ad feel very personalized and local by using what's called a dynamic ad. Power words. So these are 12 power words for sales and ad copy. And I'm not going to read them all, but these are great words that you can get a copy of to integrate into future emails or other forms of ads that you're doing or even posts that you're making on your own business's social accounts. All right, the lazy brain, beginning and end. Oftentimes, and just like you guys might be getting bored here with this 50-minute presentation, we want to think about important ways that we can interrupt people to keep them engaged in what it is we're doing or talking about. So if that's a long presentation, simple things such as physical movement, getting people to jump, to move, stand up, move, do a jumping jack, do something to stimulate the brain and get them, and get them re-engaged again with you. Jingles, right? For those of us that have been in San Diego for a while, we can uh, think of jingles such as Corky, 1-800-901-1102, um, or Mossy Nissan. They work still. Um, so if you have any sort of video or audio message, catchy, memorable jingles do continue to stand out. When you are making a video, one of the things that often people don't even think about or don't really feel like they should care about is the music that is playing in that video. Um, there are so many great options nowadays for inexpensive um, copywritten music that you can use uh, in the background of your video. It will allow you to stretch the time that people listen. Um, it'll help in their recollection and it'll help bring attention to certain things in the video if you use the right music beds. If you're looking for very inexpensive ideas, maybe you're trying to figure out a new logo for your business and you wanna get five or six different ideas from different people, go online to Fiverr. The root of that name is that originally things cost $5 on that site. Now some of them cost more than that, but it's a great inexpensive way to test different resources when you're exploring different ideas. Back to the online e-commerce side, there's two good platforms that can help your shopping business. If you want to have a um, hosted solution where they're hosting your shopping site for you, Shopify's the way to go. If you want to host the shopping site yourself, then Magento's e-commerce platform is a really good one. Shopify if you want them to host, Magento if you want to host the site. User groups. So these are groups that, and most of you have probably experienced them on Facebook. Maybe you've joined a Facebook group that is related to your community. Maybe it's an interest-based one um, because you own a motorcycle or it's about a certain group uh, that has an interest in foods. Um, Reddit is another massive audience online with groups of about any sort of topic. And these are great groups to engage and join from your business. The key thing is if you're gonna join as a business into these groups, make sure you don't go in and just pitch yourself, but that you engage the audience and share relevant information. So one of our clients is a um, hardscape supply company that sells pavers and decorative rock and all sorts of wonderful things. When we engage people on Facebook and Reddit, we don't put ads out there as to we're the best place, but we engage in the dialogue talking about great tips and ideas and recommendations, helping build credibility for our client. And that way people will want to learn more. And where do they go to do that? They go to our client. So these are two very powerful ways to help inject yourself into dialogue that's going on about your industry. Surveys. 
great simple way but keep them short keep them sweet don't make them 20 30 40 questions long um, ask the most relevant questions so you can get the answers and feedback using the tool like MailChimp or um, uh, SurveyMonkey or others to complete those. And ultimately, the question that matters most, at least in our opinion, that we care about is how likely are you to recommend us, right? Because if someone says, I'm very likely to recommend you, then that means they're happy with the work you're doing, they're happy with the price, they're happy with the service and all the other things because obviously if they feel any frustration with those, they're probably not gonna recommend you. So as you think about all of your clients, recommend focus or suggest focusing on that key thing. How likely are they going to, rec are they to recommend me? A great way to create engagement, and you've probably seen this on social media if you've been on there, is contests asking people to engage, maybe to um, like and share your post and you're gonna pick somebody at the end of that to win a prize. So think about ways that you can simply, easily, for low cost to no cost, create ways to engage people through a contest idea um, that can build engagement and uh, a greater following with your brand. Online forums, these are groups similar to Facebook and Reddit, but there's many others, and um, you can do some great social posting there, and that is one of the simplest ways to improve your search results. Uh, many of you have heard the term SEO, which is search engine optimization. Um, anytime you have a social posting out there, you can link that back to your own social account or your website, which can help build more traffic back to you. Building a storied brand. So here's just a quick example. How many of us remember Agent Q versus 007? So as you think about your brand, which may just be yourself or your business or your company, what are you doing to build a brand that is truly memorable? Um, I forget how many 007 movies are coming out or have been out, but uh, I think it's over 30 now. Um, this is a great book that talks about that by Donald Miller, Building a Story Brand. One little thing, if you're a business with an in-store traffic, here's a simple thing to transform and change. Change that receptionist to your director of first impressions, right? Who talks to more people than anybody else generally in a business? It's that receptionist or operator and who doesn't want to be greeted by the person on the right versus the person on the left? We've all received them, we've all gotten them before. Yes, they continue to work. The little Chotsky, that thing that you can leave and give to somebody where you've planted that seed. So probably the best Christmas gift I ever gave clients was years ago, we had a candy jar that we had our logo put on and we filled it with custom M&Ms that were the colors of our company logo. And um, for many years, I would see those candy jars on clients' desks, maybe still filled with new candy, hopefully not those same M&Ms, uh, but often turned into pencil holders or paper clip holders and stuff because people felt guilty about throwing away a candy jar that they got. So think about a unique way that you can create a lasting impression with your prospects and your clients uh, that's sitting in front of them on a daily basis. Affiliate marketing. So this is uh, where you are connecting with others to do marketing on your behalf. So that might be uh, an endorser. It might be somebody that has high recognition within your industry or your community and connecting with them in order to help increase your brand and uh, your business um, recollection and name awareness. Referrals, we all love them. Um, there's a great organization that was started out of Utah called Corporate Alliance, and they have a principle called learn, serve, and grow. First, learn about somebody. Second, ask how you can serve them. And then third, ask for that referral to grow your own business. But it goes back to that principle of giving first. So learn, serve, and then have an opportunity to grow your own business by asking for those referrals. Influencer, so I'm a big beach volleyball fan and nut. So here's Casey Patterson, uh, US Olympian, um, lives in Huntington Beach. 
And um, he is an influencer in the volleyball community. And you can see here, this was a post of his recently promoting a brand that he is an influencer for. So if you're in the volleyball space, you know, in the beach volleyball world, you gonna, Wilson Volleyballs is one of the key brands that you might be considering. Obviously, Casey's a professional athlete that makes his living that way. Most of us are not. Um, but what can we do to connect with influencers in our own little communities? Sponsorships, we've probably done them before, some of us, whether that's a little league, maybe it's a high school gym who has an opportunity, or in my community in San Marcos, um, the elementary school has a fence line that has several businesses that have paid to have their banner as you pull up to the parking lot. There's lots of great low cost opportunities to get your name out there through sponsorships that you can connect and engage. But again, caution you, don't just do it and be a disconnected sponsor because you'll get vetted, you'll get weeded out quickly and people will sniff that and go, hey, you're just here for our money. So if you're gonna do that, make sure you're an engaged person in that community as well. Restrooms, here's a fun one. Most of us, when we go to a restroom or eatery or something, we tend to end up at the restroom. So check out the places where you can place ads. Um, one of the funnest campaigns that I ever had a chance to work on was when the brand Scion was launched by Toyota. And we were looking at how to reach the, the younger demographic that Toyota was hoping would buy a Scion brand. So we launched a restroom campaign in bars across America with some very catchy ton in chink advertising that caught people as they were in the facility. So a unique way that will definitely stand out with an audience. Experiential marketing, that's when you take your marketing to the street. And this is obviously a big idea that most of us don't have a budget to do with an Oscar Mayer, the Wienermobile, but it gives us a great reminder and example of how can you take your brand to the street, so to speak, whether that's a street fair and a community event or even a sponsorship at a, at a Carlsbad Chamber event like we have the opportunity to do at a first Friday breakfast. But how can you do that and create that experience to lift awareness of your brand and create some activations or engagement with potential business leads? Online ad bid adjustment. So here's a technical one, but one thing that most um, digital ad companies mess up for their clients on is they don't break out their bidding based on device type. So whether someone's looking for a mobile off of a mobile device, a desktop or laptop, or possibly even gender-based bidding. Um, so if you have a digital agency that's running campaigns or you're running them for yourself, make sure you check the cost of your ads based on the different devices and based on genders and adjust your bids accordingly. Right, counter strategies for new restrictions. So what you're seeing happening nowadays is more and more restrictions, restrictions are occurring on what the platforms can gather from people as they visit them. This started in Europe and came to the United States uh, this past year. So what that means is uh, Platforms like Google and Facebook and others will know less and less about the people that go to their websites, which makes traditional media, such as television, radio, direct mail, billboards, etc., more powerful in terms of an option to target and reach people. And also why it's very important to make sure you're doing SEO work, search engine optimization work, to ensure that your website shows up highly when someone does a work be, or, or does a search. Uh, again, because the digital platforms are gonna become more and more blind on who we actually are when we are visiting and using their platforms. Frenemies, so these, those are those folks that you might consider uh, competitors, but you wanna align yourself to be aware of who they are and what they're doing so that you can counteract any potential messaging and advertising that they might be pulling off. Business cards, yes, they are so powerful. We give them away and what's awesome is they are super cheap to print nowadays. So split test your business cards, okay? Try out different ideas. Don't be afraid to change it up if one's not getting you many phone calls. Um, also, you've probably heard this before, give two business cards out versus one because maybe they'll be willing to share your business card, not only obviously keep it for themselves, but share it with somebody else in the organization. 
be clever with it. One divorce attorney that we saw had a perforated line down the middle of their business card and their information on both sides, obviously tongue in cheek, playing off what they do for a living. Guerrilla marketing, this is again that buzz marketing of getting your brand in front of high foot, foot traffic areas um, that uh, will create great exposure and great photo opportunities for you. Mascots, we don't have to be big to have a mascot. We can be a small business and have a fun mascot. Obviously one memorable one for those of us from Southern California is Cal Worthington with his dog, Spot. Rivals, it's okay to be number two sometimes and how do you approach them and how do you tackle that? Um, so when uh, original Coke changed to their new recipe, Pepsi came out with the Pepsi challenge, right? Um, Avis, had to take on Hertz. So they used a different approach to real, help really emphasize that they weren't really number two based on the statistics they might have been, but in terms of the customer service and engagement. Um, Under Armour, actually, when they came out, they wrote letters directly to Nike, Nike and publicized those letters touting how unique and different they were and were going to be against the big bad number one in their industry. Borrowed interest. Think of a unique, catchy way to create engagement. So a great example was when a YouTuber made a skateboard out of an iPad and created a lot of buzz for that uh, iPad brand. It talked about the strength and quality of that product. Next, air, attention, interest, and retention. Think about those things. Attention, interest, in order to gain, gain retention. Breakfast. Okay, this is another super long acronym, so I'm gonna let you read it when we send the email, but this is a great way to create memory and recollection for your industry or for your business or brand. Scarcity, how can you, you, how can you create what you do or what you offer um, might have a perception of scarcity, maybe limited access, limited availability, maybe it's based off of pricing, uh, it could be based off of the words that you use and the perception that you can only book um, a uh, consultation with you during certain times or certain periods or for a limited time. So think about how you can make what you offer or do or sell have a perception of scarcity or limited time only. Standing room only. This is an old trick, but if you're booking an event, book a slightly smaller room than you really need. Drive that perception of increased demand and awareness. CBMs, we referenced these earlier. These are confidence building measures. So these are things that you want to tout about yourself. Maybe a five-star ratings on Google or um, Facebook or Yelp, pedigrees, certifications, warranties. What are those things that you can put out there on all of your platforms and maybe even on your business card that will increase the confidence people have to do business with you? Unsubscribe page. If you're doing email marketing, then you have an unsubscription, unsubscribe button. When someone clicks that unsubscribe button, it's a fun way to try to maybe keep a person uh, to change their mind. And so one business actually had uh, a few options before somebody actually could click the button to unsubscribe. So don't make it too difficult because that's just gonna upset somebody. But maybe you can have a fun statement or question that might get somebody to change their mind and say, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and stay engaged here and uh, stay subscribed to that newsletter. Texting, hugely powerful, right? 98% of all text messages are opened up. Um, which means if you can communicate that way with people, you're going to have a greater engagement. My own voicemail says, ask people to text me versus leave me a message. Why? Because it's so much easier to simply respond to them and connect with them. And then if I do need to pick up the phone and call them, I can. There's great chat widgets that are available like Podium, which has a option. You can put a tech, uh, chat window on your um, website but it'll actually convert into text messaging that you can go have redirected to your own cell phone, for example. Yelp, yes, sometimes we love it, sometimes we hate it as a business owner, but regardless of how we feel, it is there. And when someone does a search about your business, most of the time, Yelp's directory and profile about you is gonna be on page one of that 
of that search result. So make sure, number one, that you've claimed your Yelp profile, number two, that you've completed it, and number three, that you monitor it and that you do respond when people do give you a review, whether that's a one star or five star. Deals. Everybody likes a deal, whether it's buy one, get one free, free shipping, fourth night free, friends fly free, whatever that is, what's that offer that you can put out there that's going to get people to pause and slow down and maybe reconsider uh, chatting with you and engaging your organization. Amazon optimiz optimization. If you have products on Amazon, it's just like a website. You can optimize that so your products have a greater chance of Amazon choosing to show people your product over somebody else's. Uh, so make sure that you are optimizing that. There are specialists out there that that's all they do is optimize clients' Amazon shopping accounts. Stickers, another great easy way almost like a Chotsky to get your brand out there. Ball caps and merchandise, again, same thing. So whether it's a business or a school or anything, people that are loyal to you are gonna be willing to maybe wear some of that apparel. Um, we talked about this earlier, low cost lawn impression. Think of those things that you can do that are gonna be there. How many of us go to coffee shops in general, right? And most of them have a cork board up there. If you're gonna post something up there, make sure it's simple and to the point and easily readable, and it will stay on that cork board for quite a while, giving you lasting impressions in that coffee shop. Branded keyword protection. You can't prevent people from bidding on your, key, on your own business name, but you can protect them from using it in your ad copy. And you wanna make sure that you've done that keyword protection on the search engines. Next one, psychology of the gate. A primal urge is to improve your situation. So you wanna think about how you can improve your own marketing situation and also your own financial status. Um, number one YouTuber, this is actually about a year and a half old, this stat makes $26 million a year doing what they love best, which is making YouTube videos. Gamification, memorable ones might be McDonald's Monopoly game, Obviously, I, you know, for those of us that travel, airline points are a huge thing, but what's a fun way that you can engage and create a, a, an increase in frequency and engagement of your business or your service, regardless of what you do, in kind of a fun gamified way? Finding the decision maker. So a great question in a conference room is to ask this question, what happens when this project goes over budget by whatever? and look to see who everybody turns to, okay? That's the ultimate decision maker, regardless of the title in the room. So figure out that question that's relevant for you to ask when you're in a crowded situation to know who you really ultimately need to influence to sign your contract or do an agreement with you. Faxing, how many of us have received a fax in the last month? Probably not many. So when you do send a fax, it does stand out, okay? So be clever with it. Uh, for example, hey, the fax machine still works, so it's gonna be an awesome day um, and have a brief message for you. So let's uh, maybe use some old tactics that we haven't done in a while. Letter writing, we talked about it earlier. Make sure you use those and also maybe even help people do that by offering a branded pen as well. But uh, a letter costs us the paper it's on and the 50 cent stamp and it'll really stand out. How do you connect with people that are VIPs and how do you influence those that are very, very important people? You wanna focus on fishing in specific pools versus rivers where you've got lots of people flowing down constantly. You wanna identify where those best pools of prospects are for you and focus your attention on those as you're working to grow your business. 800 numbers versus local prefixes. Always, 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 if you're a local business, use a local prefix number. Um, do not use a toll-free number, okay? You will have much, you will have a better click-through rate or phone-through rate, meaning people that see it, your
Okay, where do sales managers get maximum use of their time? So if you're an organization that has multiple people, it's two key areas with your top reps and with your new reps, okay? Um, obviously recruiting a healthy pipeline is great too, but if you can focus time on your top sales reps and with your brand new reps to help elevate them quickly, that's gonna be the best use of your time. Spanish language. Uh, so in San Diego, there are roughly 400,000 people that dream in Spanish, uh, which ultimately helps influence the uh, how they think and when they're thinking and the language that they're gonna make a decision on. So one of the things that we had was a client um, is Harley Davidson, and they had some perceptions about who bought certain products of theirs. So when we did a analysis of their customer database for the past five years, we found that nearly 40% of the buyers of their used Harley Davidsons were Latino. And so it allowed us to create some alternative messaging and advertising out there in Spanish language that resonated much higher with the Spanish community uh, and help them substantially increase their sales. Here's a very low cost way to utilize direct mail. It's called Every Door Direct Mail, EDDM. What that means is if you really wanna hit a particular neighborhood or a particular subdivision, this mail piece goes to literally every person on the street. The postage is much less because we've taken the, uh, the work out of the post office. They don't have to sort it. They know that, hey, this postcard or this letter that looks like this, everyone on the street gets it, so it makes their job easier, so it means your postage is lower. Uh, a great, low, uh, great way to reduce your cost uh, when you're doing a mailer. Nonprofit postage. It's amazing how many nonprofits we work with that have not secured a nonprofit postage permit. It drops your cost substantially when it comes to sending mail out. So if you're on the board of a nonprofit, part of a nonprofit, make sure you have a nonprofit postal permit and are utilizing it when you send out your mail. Testimonials. Yes, use them, use them, use them. If you get a five star review on an online, uh, platform, make sure you repurpose that and share that in as many ways as you possibly can to build that trust. Customer journey mapping. This is a five hour presentation just on this thing, which we won't do today, of course. But this is when you think about the journey that someone has in doing business with you. What does that look like? How does that potentially start? What things do you put them through in order to get a chance to actually purchase or engage with you? And what can you do to improve each of those aspects along the journey that someone has with your business? Lifetime warranties. Um, be cautious, uh, not only as a consumer, but also if you are putting offers out there as a business that you know the laws and you understand things before you put any sort of guarantees out there. Uh, corporate exhaust. So when a bankruptcy lawyer hands off his client, uh, to a tax relief specialist for a referral. So that's where you're collaborating maybe with fellow chamber members to realize, hey, once someone gets done with me, they're gonna need you. Um, there's a chamber member here, um, Ryan Video Productions, and we collaborate because once people need, get a video done, they need it to be seen by people. So Chris has referred people to us that we can then deploy that video for them and vice versa. We can do great video deployment and we can refer people to Chris that need to get the video made in the first place. Traffic, if you uh, attend trade shows, a great unique way to stand out is not to pay the high dollar cost to have a big booth at the trade show, but hit people as they are leaving that trade show or maybe arriving to the trade show at the airport. Uh, maybe there's unique gifts that will help them as they're leaving from exhaustion or when they're arriving, maybe a little planner gift or something that they can use while they're in town. Um, because trade shows can be extremely expensive. This is a great alternative to stand out and be unique um, at a substantially lower cost. Uh, bus stops at trade shows, another great way. As everybody's heading on those, getting ready to jump on the shuttles back to their hotels and such, um, be there with that bottle of water that's branded or maybe a snack uh, that's got your label on it, something to help you stand out there um, at the show. The carpet bombing, we talked about this a little bit with our client in the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Again, that's the way to be able to saturate a particular area 
with your digital ads. And you can do that as specifically as a particular building. So if I wanted to reach decision makers at Qualcomm, for instance, I can run a digital ad that is only going to be seen by people in the buildings of Qualcomm. That's what we're talking about is really hyper-targeting that. If people are at a concert at the amphitheater in Chula Vista and I know that my audience might be there based on the artist that's performing, I can target just that location. I can target just Legoland. So think very uniquely, very hyper-targeted uh, to get your message out. The pedigrees, we talked about this earlier. Make sure your website, here's that live or that visual HTTPS. Make sure your site has that. If it doesn't have that, that means you're missing your SSL certification. Ask your web developer, why don't you have that and get it done 911. Commercial real estate, here's an example for creating a unique thing. Have a pancake breakfast, bring in people from the community if you've got a property as a commercial, that's a commercial property or residential property. Bottom line, what's a unique creative way that you can bring a lot of people together that have the potential interest in what you're serving or doing. Samples, these are always great. Who doesn't love a free sample, but always get some skin in the game by at least charging them for shipping or freight. Um, so that there is some engagement versus just that completely free offer. Sub brands play a narrative in your story as well. So if you're thinking about your own business and you're a franchisee, maybe um, Hilton, the Hilton brands, Marriott with all of its brands, even though they have their own unique stories like Courtyard and Spring Hill, for instance, with Marriott, they're all connected to that brand or Garden Inn is still connected to Hilton. So you need to think about how each influence each other, particularly if you own a franchise or a franchisee yourself. Memory equals emotion and repetition, okay? So we've got to think about what emotion can we exude when we are marketing to people? And then we need to think about the repetition, meaning how often we're sending that message to somebody so it can increase their memory of who we are. Um, a quick example of that, and then we're done, is when you're doing email marketing, don't just send one email out and then go, oh, it didn't work. You need to create that repetition so that people can have that memory of who you are and increase the likelihood that they're going to engage you. So that is 101 tips. I think I made it. I covered them a couple minutes over. I apologize for that. Um, a lot, most of these, believe it or not, are do-it-yourself tips, okay? Um, and if you don't know how to do them, it's not a sales pitch from Target River, but I am happy to answer your questions. Just uh, email me, reach out to me, and I can help you if you need to figure out how to secure your Google My Business listing, for instance, or how to set that up, or any of the other things that we covered. Happy to go through that and support you guys as chamber members so you guys can have great success as well. Ryan, thank you so much. I want to make sure, do we have any questions? If we do, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. That was awesome, by the way. Thank you. No problem. Well, and thank you for everybody tuning in. And um, I can't, personally, I can't wait to see everybody in person again. Uh, about a month ago, I had some clients that started wanting to have in-person meetings again. And it was a little unique. We'd sit 10 feet apart, sometimes in a conference room with our masks on, but uh, it's at least neat to see things starting to come back. Um, we're members of a, a chamber up in Idaho because we do business in multiple states and they're actually having their golf, their annual golf tournament in a few weeks. And I'm like so excited about that because it'll be something normal again because uh, uh, of their, the way that they're opening their pace up. But uh, again, thank you. And I look forward to seeing each of you uh, hopefully soon. Okay. And then don't forget to put your email address in the chat room if you'd like a copy of his 101 um, tips. And we will get those all noted down and we'll get that email off to you guys today. And that will come from my email address, which is brian at targetriver.com. Brian spelled the traditional, the right way, B-R-I-A-N, at TargetRiver.com. All right. Thank you, everyone.